Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Checks and Balances TV. I'm your host, Matthew J. Reddick, and I'm committed to giving you the truth you need to financially succeed. Each week, we'll review the news, check the facts, and provide balanced insight and unbiased advice to help you make critical financial decisions. So let's get up, get energized, and get going, and see how today's headlines impact your financial future. Another new year is upon us, and it's a great opportunity for a fresh start. Every January 1st brings a renewed commitment to making positive change. So in 2011, why not make a commitment to improving your finances? A positive change in your financial well-being can greatly impact the quality of your life for many years to come. A recent study conducted by Principal Financial Group found that many employees and retirees alike have taken steps to improve or rebuild their financial nest egg since the recession hit in 2008. Those steps include spending less money, paying down debt, increasing emergency and retirement savings. For this week's edition of Checks and Balances TV, we'll identify the most effective strategies to accomplish your financial goals and become fiscally fit and also how to stay committed to your resolutions throughout the year. With every new year, we normally see federal changes to some types of taxes, laws, and regulations that govern our personal finances. It's important to know what these changes are so you'll know how it will affect your financial pocketbook and tax liability. This year is a little different. It's the lack of change that's making headlines. The Bush tax cuts will remain in effect for at least two more years. Contribution limits for retirement accounts will stay at the same level for next year. Social Security benefits will not see any COLA increase, which is the cost of living allowance, and there will be no pension guarantee insurance limit increase as well. So far, 2011 marks the year of unchange. Okay, so what's really going on here? Let's check the facts using our checks and balances process. Whatever your financial resolutions may be for this year, it's likely to include reduced spending, saving more, and paying off debt. The Department of Labor's annual consumer expenditure report found that in 2009, the average American household earns just under $63,000 per year before taxes. The same household spends about a third of that in housing expenses and a fifth in transportation expenses. Food consumed both in and out of the home combined with the cost of entertainment accounts for about 20%. Health care together with personal insurance and contributions to pensions comes in at around 18%. Once you add it all up, the expenses per average American household total about $49,000 per year. This leaves approximately $14,000 left for taxes and other personal items. If you're in a 15% tax bracket, you'll pay $9,500 in taxes. Once it's all said and done, the average American household has about $4,500 extra per year. If your goal is to save more this year, you'll need to reduce spending at the same time. Non-essential items such as dining out and entertainment may need to be reconsidered. Americans have been doing better with spending less and saving more in 2010. According to a study by Harris Interactive, 62% of adults have purchased more generic brands and 45% are brown bagging their lunches as opposed to buying lunch in a restaurant. The most recent report from the Federal Reserve indicated savings deposit accounts increased during each of the first 10 months of 2010. The last two months of the year's findings will be available soon. When it comes to debt, According to the Federal Reserve, as of October 2010, the total revolving debt in the U.S. stands at $800 billion, which is declining at a pace of 8.5% a year, which is good news. October marks the 26th month in a row that outstanding debt has declined, down 17% from its high of $957 billion in 2008. While a new year almost always brings about change, most rules that govern your finances this year are not. There are only marginal changes impacting small segments of the population, but for the rest of us, it's business as usual in 2011. As an example, the Bush tax cuts for income and investments have been extended for another 24 months. Income tax brackets will remain the same at the current levels of the lowest 10% and then 15%, 25%, 28 33 and 35%. And itemized deductions will continue to be allowed for all taxpayers. Current investment tax rates will also be extended, meaning qualified long-term capital gains and dividends will continue to be taxed at 15%, and short-term capital gains will be taxed at ordinary income. 
Those in the 10% and 15% income tax brackets will continue to not have to pay any taxes on long-term capital gains if they sell that asset within the next two years. Contributions to 401ks and IRAs will remain the same as well next year for 2011. If you're already in retirement and collecting a pension, the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, the government agency that insures private sector pensions, will not increase guaranteed insurance limits in 2011. The same is also true, unfortunately, for Social Security recipients. For a second year in a row, inflation was not high enough to generate a cost of living increase. Retirees will continue to receive checks for the same amount as they did in 2010. However, by law, Medicare premiums, as related to Part B, cannot increase faster than the pace of Social Security, which means that most existing enrollees will continue to pay $96.40 per month if they signed up in 2009 or earlier, and $110.50 if they signed up in 2010. New enrollees in 2011, however, will see slightly higher premiums. The FDIC will continue to insure your bank account in 2011 up to $250,000, and anyone can still do a Roth IRA conversion this next year, regardless of their income. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, Matt, what does all this mean to me? Well, now that we've checked the facts, let's balance this news using our checks and balances process to determine what action you should take today. The biggest challenge to a New Year's resolution is actually sticking to it. Here is my strategy for getting started and staying committed throughout the new year. Fiscal fitness starts with an effective financial plan. To truly spend less, save more, and pay off debt, you must take action now. Set your sights on your financial goals for 2011 and then create a daily, weekly, and monthly action plan. Once it's planned, automate the process. If your goal is to spend less, then go on a spending diet. Put your discretionary income on portion control and only give yourself a set amount of money each week. If your goal is to save more, talk to your employer about dividing your paycheck into two different payments, a deposit into your checking account and a deposit into your savings or 401k. Chances are good that if you don't see it, you won't miss it. And then stick to it throughout the year. Commit to your plan and your plan will become reality. And lastly, don't procrastinate, do it now. In a country that highly anticipated change for the better, no change this year comes with some mixed feelings. While it's good that we're not falling back into another recession currently, the lack of forward movement is just as troubling. We really can't depend on the government to make our lives better. We must take control of our own future. Learn from your mistakes in previous years. Identify the good and bad moves that you've made. Did you contribute enough to your retirement plan last year? Will you this year? Did you count on receiving an increase in your Social Security benefits? Resolve to make improvements on your own financial plan for the new year and make a promise to stick to it every single day. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? A new year is always a great time to evaluate where you are, where you've been, and where you'd like to go. You may have plenty of goals for your future and retirement, but until you get those goals on paper and develop a plan, those goals are merely wishes. You must work to be fiscally fit, much like an exercise or weight loss program. You must shed your unwanted debts, tighten up your pocketbook, and strengthen your savings and increase your overall financial health. What makes me an expert? <laughs> I wrote the book on it. My good friend Jack Lelane and I wrote this book together, Fiscal Fitness, Eight Steps to Wealth and Health, to help Americans become physically and financially fit. It can be done, and you can do it. In this week's CBTV poll, we asked Americans an important question. What is your number one financial resolution for 2011? The options were A, setting a budget, B, paying down or paying off debt, C, was saving more for retirement, and D, was writing a will or other estate planning documents. Well, 42% of you said that saving more for retirement was your number one financial resolution for 2011. This is a great resolution to have also. Contributing more to your savings and retirement accounts in 2011 will provide financial benefits that you will reap for many years to come, especially during your golden years. Commit to your resolution and you will be well on your way to becoming fiscally fit this next year. In our On the Street segment, we travel the country to ask Americans what they think about an important financial topic or issue.
For this week's segment, we asked people how they were cutting back their spending to save money in the new year. Let's take a look at what America had to say. What are you doing right now to save money or reduce expenses in this turbulent eco economy that we have today right now? Just watch the pennies, you know. I practice what I call cigar box accounting. Nickel in, nickel out. That's it. It's that simple. What are you and, and your husband doing to save money or reduce expenses during this tough economy that we're in right now? I got a list of stuff. Um, for one, um, I do canning. Excellent. So we also grow some of our own food, and we have two acres, so we grow our own heating wood. Oh. Um, don't shop retail stores. What are you or your husband doing currently to save money or reduce expenses during this uh, tough economic downturn right now? We stopped eating our money. We stopped eating out. Yeah, that's a tremendous amount of money. And we stopped traveling. It's traveling, uh, airfares have gone up, mm -hmm. and it's very unfortunate because a lot of economies depend upon tourism. Uh, but th those are the two main things we've cut out of our budget. Are you doing anything to save money or reduce expenses during this economic downturn that we're in right now? Oh, absolutely. I've, I've modified my lifestyle appreciably and um, we have entertained corporate cutbacks as well. What type of things specifically could you share with our viewers that's helped you to uh, save money or reduce expenses? Well, recognizing the difference between needs and wants and Good admitting point. to yourself let's deal with the needs and let the wants take care of themselves. Yeah. Well, as you can see, people are being very creative in how they plan on reducing their spending habits this year. I'm sure you have some good ideas yourself. And now for Matt's weekly tip, tool, or technique. Don't overcomplicate the new year with setting a variety of different resolutions. With any plan to change habits, it must be done one small step at a time. So keep it simple. And while you may have many resolutions, identify the one or two resolutions that if all else fails, you can continue to commit to and keep it throughout the year. Stay focused and make sure that you've started the year with a clear plan. For example, if your goal is to pay down, let's say, $6,000 in credit card debt at an average 15% interest rate over the next 12 months, it will require approximately $542 each month to pay off that credit card in full by the end of the year. So figure out the amount needed per paycheck and create a plan to live within your means without the amount needed for repayment of the debt and without using any other credit cards. Put your focus and energy towards achieving this goal and by the end of the year you will have it paid off and you'll be glad you did. Now is the time to realize that neither talking about nor waiting for fiscal fitness to one day arrive will get you there. You are responsible for turning your goals and wishes into reality. Only you can make sure that your financial resolutions are achieved and that you become fiscally fit in the new year. Stick to your plan in 2011 and don't give in or give up. Mark your calendars for the next installment of our Truth About series. This upcoming episode will air later this month and is on the Truth About Mutual Funds. You will learn the pros and cons, both sides of the coin on this important financial product so you'll know if it's the right investment for you. And be sure to friend our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel to gain exclusive access to our library of viral videos and the lighter side of finance. For more information on how to become a checks and balances savvy consumer and to download any of our free reports, visit the download section of our website. Also, be sure to get your copy of the Financial Freedom Personal Checkup, a free report that teaches you how to make a confident, informed decision about money and life. And while you're on the site, remember your voice counts. Be sure to take this week's poll and visit our Tell Us What You Think section to share your opinion. Make your voice heard. And finally, remember that only you can control your financial future. You can succeed. You just need confidence and determination. I'm Matthew J. Reddick from Checks and Balances TV. Be sure to join us next week when we'll discuss how to become a 21st century investor. Until then, spend less, save more, believe in yourself, and make it happen. This edition of Checks and Balances TV is brought to you by American Equity Investment Life Insurance Company. For more information on how to create a guaranteed income stream for life or to learn more about American Equity, visit www.american-equity.com or call 877-633-6417.